All right. Working? Howdy. why that thing didn't work anyway how's everybody doing on this uh wonderful saturday afternoon still daylight out that's where i am <laughs> happy uh early saint patty's day i know it's tomorrow but it's uh falls on a sunday right so people can go out on saturday or they'll probably have parades i think today in where i am they have the the newport parade and everything anyway uh, I'll go over a couple of things here today. Um, I got a, uh, I got a gig. I got to head out to this evening. Uh, a little place called uh, Galactic Theater in uh, Warren, Rhode Island. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, considering it's uh, St. Patty's Day this weekend. And let's see. I was gonna go over a couple of things. Uh, that I think about during the week and we can, I can talk about on the stream. And one of the things is, um, I might've mentioned it before, but pedal steel licks on the guitar. It's always kind of fun to play. So one that of course you have your, your standard stuff, right? Like, um, stuff like that, like that, you know, so you're bending to the, to this major chord. So you're bending to the D. So if you're always wondering, like, oh, well, what do I play? Just if you have this, think of this bar chord shape. Just move it down two whole frets, and those top two strings, when you bend them up, bend the second string up, that's going to be your D. And then when, of course, you're the other way, when you're bending the third up, which you're, that's what you're doing, you're bending the third up, which is what gives it that sound, uh, wherever your little finger is on the neck, here, that's going to be a C. If you want D, there it is. Um, so that's your standard type, type pedal steel stuff. The other, this is a cool lick that I I like. It's um, can be used kind of. I I end up using it on a turnaround. You're, you're going to the five. You're coming back to the one. And you can go very country-ish, yeah. And you can play that anywhere on the neck, right? So um, that's just a fun, a fun little lick. Another, um, a lot of this kind of stuff, uh, or like country bluegrass stuff, ends up being played in G because you can have all those open strings. So there's a couple other licks that uh, I can show you here. Stuff I usually kind of... Riffs and licks are good to learn. Uh, they're go-to things when you want to... When you're trying to improv, it's a great thing to get started. You can it, blast into the solo with something you're very familiar with and then fill in the space with things that, you, that you're making up as you go and then you know when you're going to, you know, kind of tie it all together before, when you're coming out of the solo... You, you go back to something that you're kind of familiar with. So it's like in and out, in and out, that kind of that kind of thing. Something you're familiar with, make it up. Familiar, improv. And then sometimes as you get more comfortable with the song, you're improving the whole thing or whatever. Um, a nice lead-in is uh, something like this. It's like a two-beat. Or um, something like this, uh, or right, do something like that, and this kind of like sort of chicken picking. It's kind of cheating a little bit, but it's um, play that seventh. Something like that. And that, um, you know, you can just kind of throw it in. I mean, that's pretty fast, obviously, if you're playing uh, a two beat like that. But um, yeah, those are kind of a couple of couple of ideas. And of course, there's always the classic 
um, pedal steel type chord, which is a nine, really. You're just you're just um, omitting the the fifth. So again, whatever top string you're playing, that's your your root your root note based off of that. So you, but this is a G. So I'm going G B A F natural. So F natural is your seventh. A is the nine. B is the third. And G is the root. So. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Now we got a new video coming next week. I actually just finished recording the, the, the bulk of it. Got a couple other things I got to do. Um, uh, somebody asked for 20 Flight Rock by Eddie Cochran. So we went, went over that and did the solo. Tried to learn the solo. It was as you know, best as I possibly can. Some of that older stuff is hard to hard to hear exactly what's going on, but um, yeah, it's kind of uh, it's interesting. You you think you know something, and then you go back and you learn. Oh, that's that's to totally different than what I've been playing. So it's it's good for me too to kind of um, uh, revisit a lot of this stuff, um, especially when you play this stuff live all the time. You you learn it one way and you learn it as close you can as close as you can to the original and then as you play it in a band you start to develop your own style and your own way of playing it which is which is good i think but then you go back and you listen to it and you, oh we're playing it totally different now and you don't even realize it and it just happens organically um yeah and then the one after that uh, somebody requested rockabilly rockbilly boogie um by um Johnny Burnett and the uh, Rock and Roll Trio. So that'll be a fun one. Um, I never have played that live, I don't think. I have played, like, backed people up playing it. I've never played and sang it, but it's a, always one of my favorites. Anyway, that whole album the, the, is, uh, is great. Um, let's see. So, yeah, there's that stuff. Uh, the Oh, Something I wanted to mention is going uh, picking different picking techniques is something that I kind of do and I didn't really n notice it. I don't know if I've ever explained it before, but you can create different sounds. Obviously, you have your pickup selector, but you can also pick in different areas of the neck, and I'm sure you can hear you can hear it acoustically, and it makes a huge difference. And when you think about it live, you can create a kind of a thicker blues tone tone than if you're on something more kind of country or um you know rockabilly western sounding completely changes the tone so flipping to the rhythm pickup and you can And then flip up here and move the pick around and get different sound. And of course, depending on the amplifier you're playing through and the pedals and everything is going to make a, a little bit of a difference or a lot of difference. Um, and just and every guitar is a little bit different. Sometimes you get more of an effect or less of an effect depending on what pickups you're using. If you're using both, or you're using just the one or the other, and that's something to keep in mind that you're looking for that that tone i'm always after i, w I would always been after that sweet to me it's like the sweet blues thick blues type sound and obviously that's the player as well it's not just the 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 gear but um play you you watch them play and they're playing up here on the neck and that's what's giving it the, that kind of sound to it and kind of palm muting a little bit. Maybe you get a little squeal, a couple of squeal notes in there. Um, again, depending on the setup that you have, if you have a compression, compressor, sustainer pedal or something, you're, it's going to be easier to achieve that. I don't play with anything like that, so it's just guitar delay and the amp. And occasionally I'll hit a spring verb or whatever. Um, okay, that's my delay. I don't know if I can see it. Delay pedal, pedal board. <laughs> it's just, um, 
spring the spring king the dan electo spring king dan electro spring king that's pretty good I, i've mentioned that one before on the stream that's um it's, it it's reliable it's not the best sounding spring verb pedal in the world but it is reliable and i think the best sounding one is the van zamp but they don't make that one anymore so you have to and it requires 12 volt instead of 9 volts, so it's a whole different extra uh, setup to get it to work. And of course, obviously, an old reverb tank is good, but um, I've never tried like the. I think Dan Electro makes a make us. Uh, I'm not Dan Electro. Um, Roland Boss makes a spring verb pedal. Never tried it, but I'm sure that one's good. The only thing I notice about the delay for the reverb, at least for the spring spring ones, is that when you shut the pedal off, if the note hasn't died away, the minute you click the pedal off, everything dies. It's a spring, the reverb goes away, and it's like this dry note hanging out there. It's a little weird. I found that out the hard way, but um, probably nobody noticed. But but I noticed, and I'm like, okay, got to be careful with that. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, still going along, trying to get these videos out. I try to get these things posted a little sooner. It's just, um, trying to get, uh, you know, doing the scripts and getting everything written, videoing, recording everything takes a little bit of time. And then the, uh, writing the tablature and all of that stuff. And I I want to make sure that they're good too. I don't just want to release something that's not, not going to be and accurate and, um, at least in a you know decent decent quality. So, but I can do these live streams, and that's that's fun for me, and it's uh, it keeps um, it keeps something going on the channel. Uh, the other thing was I mentioned it a little bit. I don't know if it was last stream or the stream before about uh, picking on the guitar. So when you have Two main different styles of picking is called, one's called alternate picking and the other one is economy picking. Alternate picking is where you're going, of course, alternately down, up, down, up, down, up, no matter whether you're changing strings or not, you know, right? Where economy picking is when you go from string to string, you're going down to the next string. So you would always go down. So right here, I would hit down. I'm hitting down. If you were alternate picking, you would hit, you would do an upstroke for the next note. But with economy picking, you do another downstroke. You know. And that, it, getting used to that is good because that's what helps build uh, the speed and mixing and matching the two different styles and going over the the riffs again and pra practicing it basically and deciding a, the best thing you can do is if you decide on a picking method whether it's alternate picking or whether it's economy picking just stick with it stick with that even if you're mixing and matching some e economy picking for one part of the riff and then alternate picking for another part of the riff it's uh you just figure out whatever is whatever is going to be comfortable for you and just be consistent with it and do it. And then you'll build up your speed and your accuracy over time. Um, let's see, what else? What did I, do? I did all those um, those blue bluegrass uh, riffs. Another one. This one is nice to pick with the fingers. Like that. Everyone's heard that before, but it always sounds pretty cool. And then you can, when you go to the four, you can do this. All double stops, playing around with the the um, the pentatonic scale, a pentatonic major scale, blue scale, really. It's sounding all right. Yeah. 
Uh, what's the other one in there? Um, oh, yeah, you can do something like this. If you're on an E. Do something like that. And then if you're going to go to go into the four. Or stay on the one. However you want to do, you can do it up here too. Do something like that. That's always fun, especially doing like that. You know, it's a it's a cool little sound. You get it uh, really get get rocking, right? <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Yeah, so um, got a couple of videos coming out. I'm probably gonna keep this uh, stream short today. Uh, just get ready for um, get packed up and get ready for the show later. But if yeah, if any again, if anybody has any questions, comments uh, about uh, any videos they would like to see, any songs you would like to see me go over, break down, um, tablature. I'm writing the tablature out for a lot of these tunes. I know that when I was starting, it would have been very helpful to have tablature examples of a lot of these tunes, um, especially the rockabilly stuff. I mean, there's a lot more resources now than there used to be, but even then, even now, it's still hard to find. Looking up some of this stuff, um, just the history of some of this stuff is is tough. Depends on it depends on the tune really. Uh, the Elvis stuff, of course, that's easy. That's everywhere, but uh, trying to look up the Johnny Burnett stuff, eh, it was a little little tricky. It wasn't really so um, so uh, uh, prevalent online. They have some articles about the band itself, but not necessarily in oh, Pro Tools freaking out. Not necessarily um, the individual songs. So some of this stuff is a little obscure, uh, and it's of course. If you're in the rockabilly, it's out or Johnny Burnett. That's not obscure at all. Well, it, as far as the mainstream is concerned, it's definitely obscure. Um, so, let's see. I guess I'll just kind of jam out for a little bit. I'll try to keep it at least 20 minutes, and then we'll. Um, if I uh, see anybody have any questions, I'll go ahead and we can uh, talk about whatever. <laughs> just the headphones. <laughs> Staticky. That's what I thought. something here I'm gonna switch guitars this one's probably closer into tune Two 
up a little bit there. It's good. <laughs> Sound a little better? Take a little delay off there. Still working out bugs here. reminds me of something else um so a lot of people will play you know down here and i know that playing up here on the neck is not as easy on a gretch but if you can practice you know riffs that you would normally play down here just play them up here helps out with your precision picking and and also just um you get the a wider range of the guitar than just with the um, than just playing everything down here. Another thing too that might help if you're trying to play riffs here, if you can see on the back, when you're playing these top strings, some people might keep their thumb up here, and that becomes difficult to reach. But if you put your thumb down here and also play lighter, you can get things, you know, a lot easier than trying to, than if your thumb is stuck up here. So just, just all, you know, making that tiny adjustment and kind of following the neck with your thumb as you're playing the leads can help, can help quite a bit. There's little things that, that you, that you learn and also just Pushing that wrist up underneath the neck a little bit can help can help a lot. I know when I first started playing, I would always play um, like this and not really use my little finger all that much. And then when I wanted to play some more jazz type stuff, I realized, oh, I gotta use all of my fingers, and it was tough because I ended up my my wrist would end up being like this, and then I had to almost relearn how to play and to finally be able to get some of that stuff. But it's worth it. Take the extra time, and then you can... It'll make those other riffs later on easier. And it makes just everything in general easier overall. Well, all right. Um, I hope that that guitar problem wasn't too bad, but... Hopefully that one's better. Sounds good on my end, but... All right, I guess we'll call it a day for now. And I will have the new video out hopefully by this Thursday, as long as everything works out schedule wise and I just get it edited and there's no problems, technical difficulties, all of that stuff. And I'll do another live stream. I want to do the live stream as well after the after the video. Sounds good? Okay, great. Thanks. Ah, it's a guitar. Humidity. Humidity started kicking up, started getting warmer out and yeah, crackling. So it's the one problem with the, the electronics in general. I've noticed it more with the Gretches than anything else. For whatever reason, the, the electronics will start to crackle. But I guess it happens with every every guitar, but always carry contact cleaner with you. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, and we'll see you guys next time.